Hi everybody, if you don't know me already, my name is Kaylee. I'm a gut health nutrition coach. So I help people to overcome their chronic gut and digestive issues at the root. And I use the principles of ancestral nutrition as well as some other holistic health principles as well. And in today's video, I'm gonna be talking about how to get your appetite back. So if right now you feel like you are just never hungry, you have a really hard time eating, likely you have a lot of digestive discomfort as well. Maybe you're backed up get bloated easy and it just makes it really uncomfortable and hard to eat and get an appetite then this video is for you and this is something that I dealt with a while ago but for a very long time so like one story I like to tell is back when I had my really bad constipation IBS bloating gas low appetite all that kind of stuff I remember one morning um, picking up a power bar that my mom had bought in, and it was like seeds that was like the main ingredient there was probably something to bind it together but essentially it was this very very thin tiny little power bar that was a hundred calories full of seeds and I remember just nibbling on that eating like half of it and grabbing a plastic bag to put the power bar in and putting it back in the fridge like that's how low my appetite was I couldn't eat the tiny little 100 calorie seed bar for breakfast and another one is I used to call my dad in high school at lunchtime to ask him if I should eat because I felt like I should eat but I had no appetite so if you're struggling with this believe me I've been there I get it so I'm gonna be sharing the things that I did that helped me to get to where I am now so now I wake up, I do my workout, I have my morning thing, and then I'm hungry for breakfast and I'm ready for it. And when lunchtime comes around, I'm hungry for lunch. And when dinner comes around, hungry for dinner, I'm able to eat a big dinner and I'm able to fuel my body, keep my digestive system working well, and just feel really fueled and strong, have good energy, and not have to worry about that anymore. So I'm going to be sharing what worked for me as well as what worked for my clients because I'd say maybe around half of my clients struggle with this. It's really, really common. So I'm gonna be getting into what causes the loss of appetite in the first place. Um, and then I'm gonna give you lots of tips on how you can actually increase that appetite that work with your body, address that root cause, and will work for the long run. Um, before we get too far into this video though, I do wanna let you guys know I have a free training on how to get your digestive system to work like an efficient and smooth machine. Um, so if you are interested in that, it pairs really well with getting your appetite to be strong again. So I'll talk more about that at the end, but know that there is a link down below if you're interested in checking out that free training video. So now let's get into what causes loss of appetite. I don't know if number one, but one of the biggest things is stress. When you are stressed, your energy, your nutrients, uh, your blood flow, everything goes out from your digestive system into other areas that would help keep you alive in a dangerous situation. So pretty much when you're stressed, you're in that sympathetic um, nervous system state. So you are, your heart is racing, your blood is flowing fast, you are ready to use your muscles to run, to fight, to flee. Your reflexes are very fast and very sharp, but you are not prepared to digest food, to have a bowel movement, to repair broken things in your body. All of that happens when you're in the parasympathetic mode. So if you are constantly stressed and in that stress state, your body's not prepared to digest food. Therefore, you don't really get hungry, kind of like you wouldn't get the urge to have a bowel movement in this state either. Uh, so it's really, really important that you have relaxed time, that you, you know, sit down to eat at a time you are relaxed. If you're too stressed, that you take a break from what you're doing, wind down a bit, and then proceed to eating. So if you are stressed a lot, it's going to be really, really hard to get that appetite up. So then also, gut issues is going to be huge. If you're all backed up, your body doesn't want to add more food. You're already having trouble getting rid of the waste that you have in it. If you're all bloated and your abdomen hurts, again, your body doesn't want to add more food because something's going wrong with the food that's already in there. Um, if you're getting acid reflux, it might be a fear of the burning. Like there's so many things that can go wrong. But a big thing too is your digestive system isn't working properly. 
So it's hard to add more to a system that's not working properly. And there's a lot of things that can be off in your digestive system. And I talk about those in that free training video. So if you're interested, definitely check that out. Um, yeah. But anyway, so if your digestion just isn't working well, you're not going to get as hungry. I used to feel like if I ate, my digestive system just wouldn't know what to do with it. My body wouldn't do it right. I felt like my digestion was so weak. And if I ate something, it would just sit like a rock in my stomach and nothing good would happen. I would just bloat and get more constipated. So if your gut health is not good, if you've got leaky gut, if you've got, um, gut dysbiosis, if your microbiome is off, you're just going to be fermenting things and producing all this gas and bloating and it's going to be really uncomfortable. So if your digestive system isn't working well, you really want to fix that before adding more food because more food is going to make your symptoms worse and your body knows this, which is why it's scaled back your appetite. Um, and then the third main cause is going to be poor dietary habits. So this can mean a few different things, but if you are grazing on a lot of things throughout the day, I'm gonna get into that in a moment, why well, I don't recommend that. Um, that can be a huge thing if you're eating unhealthy foods. Um, if you're binging, then it's gonna really crash your digestive system and it's gonna be really hard to eat more after it. I have been there <laughs> um, when I was just starving, or when I was never hungry all the time, when I'd finally get my appetite back, I would eat a ton and it would just sit awfully and I would hardly be able to eat the next few days. So that is not a good solution. But pretty much if you're eating foods that damage your gut further and aren't nourishing your body, it's just gonna make your digestive system worse and therefore your appetite's not really gonna increase. So those are the main three reasons. So now I wanna get into how you can actually increase your appetite. So, I want to emphasize that this is a gradual process. So what I tell my clients is as they heal their gut issues, as we're working on their specific gut issues and their root causes for those, their appetite will start to come back gradually. And I encourage them to, as their appetite's coming back, slowly eat more and more. And there are some other things I'm going to get into in a second that you can do, but I just want to emphasize that this is a gradual process of building that hunger back up, building your digestion back up, building that digestive fire stronger. Um, that's a really good analogy in Ayurveda, which is Indian holistic medicine. They talk about your digestive fire, your Agni. And if you think about it, if you made a fire before, if your fire is very weak and very little, if you put like a big wet log on it, being like hard to digest food or lots of food at once, it's gonna put that whole fire out. If you put little teeny tiny, very dry sticks and gradually increase the size of those sticks, it's gonna build you a nice strong fire. Then if you put a damper piece of wood or a larger log on there, the fire is just gonna engulf it and it's gonna be a magical, wonderful fire. Um, if you are starting with that strong fire, you just don't have to worry about this as much. So try to, Think of your digestive system like building a fire and if you're just feeling discouraged by how weak your digestive system is and all the symptoms you're feeling think about it that way of you're adding these little dry logs which are going to be easy to digest foods and not too much of them because if you overeat that's going to basically be putting out your fire so let's see Okay, so like I mentioned before, you really got to heal your gut issues at the root cause and support your digestive system. Um, this is so important. And if you don't know how to do it, I'm happy to help you more. You can check out that free training on how to do it below or feel free to book a call with me. I'll link that below too. And I'd be happy to share more about how I could help you to heal your gut issues at the root and build up a strong digestive system so you can get your appetite back. Uh, but yes, it's essential whether you do it alone or you get help that you do work on those root causes and heal your gut. Um, you also really need to manage your stress. Um, this is huge. I had a client, Alexa, who this was a big issue for her. She, she actually liked tracking her calories and she was only eating around a thousand calories a day. Um, when we first started working together and she just had a really low appetite. She had constipation, diarrhea, bloating, um, what else, period pains. She just struggled with some of these things and she was really stressed. So when we started working on 
identifying what it was that was stressing her out and brainstorming things that she could control in these situations and how she could change them. Um, also incorporating a few relaxing habits that she really enjoyed and obviously working on healing her gut and all that kind of stuff. Um, she was able to eat more. So she was gradually able to increase that to having 2000 calories a day. So double, which is a really healthy amount for, um, for her. She was a normal sized woman, um, just needed a normal amount of food. She was active as well. So it was a great amount for her and she felt she had so much more energy. Um, and yeah, she just had much better appetite. So I really feel like the stress element played a huge role for her. We even talked about how she approached her meals. So when she would go to eat, she had like a little practice she would do where she would um, just take some deep breaths. And I think there was like another thing or two she found really helpful. But anyway, just really being calm when she was eating and throughout the day more that helped a ton. And if you want to learn more about my recommendations for how you can manage and decrease stress in your life and really have those practical ways that you can apply to your own life to actually be able to reduce stress in a very practical way, um, then check out my video on that. I'll link it up above and yeah, you can learn more there. So then I would say, okay, this is a huge one. Space your meals at least three hours apart. Um, it's funny because someone asked me, I think on my last video, what I recommended for that. And this is a huge one. So basically it takes roughly three hours, maybe a little bit less from when you eat your food for your stomach to churn and digest it with stomach acid and enzymes and stuff and then for it to slowly dump little by little um, your food or they call it chyme after it's been in the stomach into your small intestine. So you want to go through your entire meal and have it all in the small intestine before you start adding more food onto your stomach. Um, we don't want to mix meals. It just makes things kind of tricky. It's We want a nice empty fresh stomach for a new meal. Um, that's kind of a whole big topic, but I'll just say that for now. So you really want to do that. If you are grazing throughout the day, that's not going to go well. I had a client, Elizabeth, who was doing that when we first met. She was grazing a lot and she had constipation. She had gallstone or gall sludge, bile sludge in her gallstone kind of issues, um, bloating. She was pretty stressed with low appetite as well so we worked on a lot of similar things that I did with Alexa but um yeah one thing I did for her was had her stop grazing and I remember I do food logs with my clients um when she was finally starting to get it and not grazing and really having those separate meals she was like oh my god I'm hungrier for my meals now so I was totally stoked uh, for her on that and I hear that a lot from my clients so make sure you are separating your meals by three hours so that's from the time you finish one meal to start another you can go a little longer um, you know it's not the end of the world if it's a little less every once in a while but as a general rule of thumb that's what I do and I just find I'm not hungry for something if it's been less than three hours so that will definitely help a lot um, and then oh and another note on that is I recommend three to four meals a day for most people. Some people do really well on two or five, so a little bit broader two or five, but most people tend to thrive on about three or four meals a day. Um, so just play with it, see what works best for you. So there was a point in my life that I loved four and now I really love three meals a day. Um, okay, so then you wanna time your meals well. So one thing I found personally was trying to eat breakfast at seven o'clock in the morning or 640 in the morning never worked. I was never ever hungry that early. And when I finally accepted that and just started eating at like nine o'clock in the morning or 10, I was suddenly so much hungrier for breakfast. So I would say if it's not to say never eat early, if that works for you, go for it. But there's a lot of people out there like myself that just do not thrive eating that early in the morning and the same with late at night. Um, a lot of people don't thrive eating a large meal and then going to bed 30 minutes later. So mess with it for yourself, but you know, really try to find a good meal timing for you. Um, 
Also try to eat around the same times. Your body will get in the habit of it. It's similar to sleep. It's really good to go to bed around the same time, wake up around the same time, then you're in a nice habit. Same thing with eating, especially if you're not feeling hungry all the time, when you really get in that rhythm for me, 10 o'clock breakfast or 9.40 breakfast and then, you know, two o'clock lunch and like six o'clock dinner. It doesn't have to be exact. It's a range. It's not exactly those times, but around the same times every day will really help that. Uh, you want to balance your meals and eat gut friendly, um, easy to digest foods. So basically you want to have carbs, fat, and protein in every single meal. Um, I could do a whole video about why that's important. If you want to know that, let me know and I'll make one. Um, but anyway, so you want to do that and you want to have really easy to digest foods. I talk about this a lot. You want lots of animal foods, maybe some cooked veggies or some fruit, but you don't want to be having like tons of grains and nuts and seeds and legumes or processed foods or vegetable oils or anything like that. And then also if you eat warmer foods or you could have like tea, like a ginger tea, ginger lemon tea, um, something like that, hot lemon water, uh, bone broth. If you drink something warm with your meals, that helps the digestion digestibility a lot as well. Um, I touched on this earlier, but just make sure you're really relaxed when you eat. If you don't feel hungry and you're not relaxed, wait, it's worth it. It might only take 30 minutes, 20, 30 minutes until you feel ready for it, but do something relaxing, do some stretching, go on a walk, take a bath, do something, sit down and read, whatever it is to get you a little more relaxed before you do eat and you will digest it much better. You'll be hungrier for it. You'll feel a lot better. Um, eat meals you enjoy. It's going to be a lot easier to, to eat more and to really have an appetite for food that you actually like. So make sure you like the foods you're eating, especially if you're taking foods to go, because I know that this is a big issue for people a lot of times when they're bringing um, meals to work or to school, is they have trouble being hungry for them, and that makes sense. It's usually a little bit stressful. Sometimes it's hard to get, get a good lunch break. So really make sure you're bringing things that you enjoy and you enjoy at the time you're having them because some things just don't keep well. So if you want to have you know, just make sure something you want. Like I liked chicken salads a lot of the time. Um, that's what I used to bring to school and work back in college. And that worked really well for me. I really liked the way they still tasted the next day. Um, and I, if I, if I felt like a little weak in the digestion, I'd bring tea or bone broth or something in a thermos. And that made me digest it a lot better. Uh, so then, okay, this one is add a healthy dessert. I have always found when I've struggled with eating as much that I can get a good appetite for dessert at the end of the day. And I personally also do better eating more at night. I'm just busy during the day. I can eat a good solid breakfast and lunch is smaller for me because I'm not as hungry for lunch as I am for breakfast and dinner. I I make things I like better for breakfast and dinner. And lunch, I just want to eat a little something to keep me going and then get back to my work or whatever I'm doing that day, chores or whatnot. So, um, oh, so for me, I eat a lot at the end of the day. I eat about half my calories actually at the end of the day. I have dinner and then I have a dessert right after. So, you know, see what works for you. Maybe that would work well for you. Um, so, okay, so for my dessert, I have dark chocolate like treats that I'll make. Um, raw milk and fruit and a date with butter and salt uh, and tea. So it's a very healthy dessert. You don't want to be eating things that aren't good for your gut. You don't want to be eating tons of, of wheat or pastries or sugar or anything like that. Um, I would, if you like dark chocolate with no sugar like I do, go for it. Uh, if you want to make your own, add a little honey or if you want to get one of those coconut sugar ones or just one of the ones that doesn't have a lot of sugar. Make sure it doesn't have a lot because that won't go well for your gut. Uh, but yeah, just find something you enjoy, a little fruit, dark chocolate. Uh, you can make homemade whipped cream, you can make homemade ice cream. Things like that are really great and they're pretty calorie dense too. So it's nice to get some extra calories in if you're struggling to do so. Oh, that brings me to my next one, which is eat calorie food, dense foods and drinks. So if you are struggling to get an appetite and you're starting to lose weight, you're worried about losing weight, 
you want to make sure you're getting enough calories and nutrients in so you can actually heal your body, fuel your body, and be healthy, then calorie dense foods and drinks make it a lot easier. So it's easier to drink your calories. A 16 ounce glass of milk is 300 calories. So that's a lot that can help you out a lot. You can have half a glass, whatever you like, but that's a great way to go. Uh, juice is good as long as you're getting a good 100% juice, no sugar added. And you're definitely gonna wanna have that with a meal and with some protein so you don't spike your blood sugar, but that's totally fine. Um, Let's see, bone broth is excellent. Um, yeah, so healthy drinks like that. Uh, and then also calorie dense foods. So fatty foods are very calorie dense. So uh, hollandaise sauce is something that I love and that's a great calorie dense food. Or cheese is a great calorie dense food. Or maybe some yogurt or um, avocado is really calorie dense so I would look uh, I would make sure you include some foods like that if you're struggling to get enough calories in while you are um, while you're having a low appetite so then my last tip is to be careful not to overeat which I kind of touched on this earlier but yeah if you overeat it's just like putting a big wet log on your tiny little fire you barely managed to start so don't do that when i would overeat it would it would totally screw me up i'd wake up the next day and feel totally bloated and awful and i'd want like nothing for breakfast and i have to make myself just eat a tiny little something so don't overeat it'll really mess you up it's it's so exciting when your appetite is back but go gradual with it and then you will continue to have your appetite and you'll only strengthen that fire. So yeah, I hope you found these helpful. They, they made a huge difference for me and they really helped my clients in getting their appetite back. So I hope they help you as well. And earlier in the video, I mentioned that I have a free training video on how to get your digestive system to work like a smooth, efficient machine. So if you're interested in that, basically what I cover is the five keys for a successful gut healing um, routine. So I like to keep things simple so you don't get confused by doing like a bunch of different things or so it's not overwhelming. So I really just go over those five key things that are honestly the most important things you need to do to heal your gut. And then I also go over the importance of a personalized, sustainable and nourishing diet and how you can create this for yourself. It's so important that you are nourishing your body and giving it the nutrients you need to heal. If you have leaky gut, if you have damage in your gut, you need nutrients to heal that. You need nutrients to make digestive enzymes to digest your food properly. So if you are, um, yeah, if you're struggling with gut issues, you have gotta have a nourishing diet. It's also gotta be sustainable and personalized for you because there's so many diets out there that just don't work for a lot of people. You know, they might help, but they're really hard to sustain. So maybe you can do some very strict elimination diet for a short period of time, but maybe you just can't quite stick to it. It's kind of hard. And I find it's really unnecessary. You don't have to get that strict in the vast majority of cases. So I really like to make sure that my clients have diets that are sustainable and work for them and are centered around things that they like too. So I don't do cookie cutter, eat these 10 foods kind of thing. I really work with what my clients are already eating and what they like to eat and then make tweaks from there. So yeah, so I talk more about that in the training as well. And then I also talk about how to have full relieving healthy bowel movements effortlessly and daily because it is no fun to struggle with trying to get healthy bowel movements. So I really break down what's causing your bowel movements to either be too loose or too hard to cause constipation or diarrhea and how you can start getting them normal and how you can stop having to think about them and have it something that just happens every day that you don't have to think about it anymore. Uh, so then also I go over the biggest mistakes that can delay your gut healing by uh, years. I think I made a video on this recently, if I'm remembering correctly, but there's a lot of mistakes that people make and I made. I made a lot of mistakes that just totally prevented me from healing. So in the training, I go over a lot of those mistakes so that you can avoid making them and you can make your progress much, much quicker. So it's a really, really informative training. You really get a lot out of it and it's totally free. Um, so if you are 
interested in that, um, the link is down below. Uh, like I said, there's a lot of really valuable info there. It's more structured than my YouTube videos on like a path to heal, like an action plan to follow to heal your gut. So if you're looking for something a little bit more comprehensive, um, then I'd really check that out. Um, yeah, so if you're interested in that, um, check it out. And also if you're interested in just getting more personalized help and kind of hearing about what I offer with my program, um, then I'll leave that link down below so you can book a call with me if you want to hear more about how I could help you one-on-one -on -one more personally to heal your gut issues. So yeah, thank you all for watching. Thanks for making it to the end. If you liked it, uh, go ahead and give the video a like, uh, comment something below for me. Let me know what you want to hear more about. Um, if you know anyone else who could benefit from this video, uh, you can share it with them. Uh, all those help me out a lot and I really appreciate it. See you guys next time.